My name is Alexis Woodard. I'm a Spanish major at the University of Michigan in Flint, and I'm here to give a presentation geared towards individuals that are possibly interested in learning about second language acquisition in adulthood. So let's get started. First, let's define and explain the jargon around second language acquisition. So second language acquisition, or SLA for short, has two distinguishable meanings. The first is just the general definition, acquiring a language that is beyond one's first or native language. Or the second meaning is that is a subfield of linguistics. Basically, SLA can refer to the theory of second language acquisition in linguistics. So in SLA, your first language is referred to as L1, the L standing for language and the one standing for first. Your next languages will be referred to as L2, L3, L4, and so on. And it's valuable to note that no matter how many languages you learn, it still falls under the theory of SLA, even if it sounds a little counterintuitive. So, as the title of this slide suggests, children are better than us adults at acquiring new languages. But to get into why, we have to define a few more terms. Critical period or as it is now referred to, sensitive period, is a time in a person's life where SLA is going to reap the most benefits and will be the most effective. The time span of this is debated, but generally, a person should try to start learning languages between the age of 2 to 13 years old, or more generally, start learning a second language before puberty starts. Ultimate attainment, on the other hand, is defined as the goal when trying to acquire a new language. Someone learning a second language or more wants to ultimately achieve native or native like proficiency. This is easier done in sensitive period of a person's life, or you could say just childhood. One study states that we found that ultimate attainment is fairly consistent for learners who begin prior to 10 to 12 years old. We found no evidence that the ultimate attainment curve reaches a floor at around puberty as has been previously su suggested. So yes, the ultimate attainment is best achieved before puberty, but as the second part of this quote points out, that doesn't mean it's impossible to achieve ultimate attainment after the fact. So let's get into why children are better at learning language than us. The big answer, neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity can be defined as the ability of the nervous system to change its activity in response to intrinsic or extrinsic stimuli by reorganizing its structure, functions, or connections. Children's brains are way better at creating diverse neural pathways, and basically, a child's brain is more malleable and adaptive, which is great for learning second languages. So let's give a real-life metaphor of what is going on in a child's brain versus an adult. Let's use the metaphor of a person commuting to work. Say person A, who is going to represent an adult, drives one way to work every day, never deviating from that path. That would represent how an adult's brain works. It's rigid and set in its ways. A child's brain would be well represented by person B, who takes a new path to work all five days of the week. Now, let's say this commute, um, the route that person A takes, gets closed for construction. This would mean that person A has a hard time getting to work because they have no other context for how to get there. But person B would have four other ways to get there because their options are open. In the same way, as we get older, our language learning goes quote unquote under construction, whereas a child's ability to navigate language learning stays fairly open due to the neuroplasticity of their brains. So what affects how we learn? We already talked about age of acquisition, so let's move on to something else, the context of learning. This means what environment are we learning in? School, home, from a guardian or a parent or a teacher, in a controlled setting or sporadic, in a foreign country with other speakers, or are we learning at home with speakers of our language, in person or online? These all affect how a person learns. Another thing is the amount, quality, and diversity of input. For language learning, you really want to have lots of input, meaning the sheer amount quality, meaning it's understandable and sets a good example for your listening skills, and diversity, meaning experiencing language input from a diverse amount of areas. 
maybe social media, books, songs, TV shows, textbooks, actual conversations with native speakers, diverse accents, etc. And the last thing that really affects our language learning is the affective factors. Anxiety, inhibition, and self-esteem go hand in hand in SLA. If there's one thing about language learning, you're going to mess up. You're going to say or sign something very embarrassing, and it's just how it is. <laughs> it's in the nature of it. That can really deter some people from trying because they don't want to feel that sense of embarrassment. But you just have to embrace it sometimes. And motivation is also key. The more instrumental the motivation, meaning the more you want to learn, the better someone is going to be at learning. So don't fret. Now, after all of hearing about this SLA and how all of these negative things can really affect our language learning, let's reestablish some hope. Even though neuroplasticity diminishes when we age, there are also interesting things that adults have access to when learning language that children might not. To start off, adults are already 100% fluent in one language. And this means that we can draw connections between sounds, images, and other things of our native language to decode languages that are new to us. Um, whereas children, sometimes they have to learn languages from scratch, one by one. Another thing is that we usually want to learn. Kids a lot of the time are forced into acquiring languages in school, don't have any choice in it, and so it's hard for them to learn because they're unmotivated. Um, adults are more likely to apply language to the real world because many kids, again, learn language in class, and it's hard for them to use it outside of that context because they're, they're studying instead of using. And we know how we learn best. It's not that we can't learn in many diverse ways, but we know which ways in which we enjoy learning. And when we're better equipped to learn language, it's because we enjoy it a lot more. Lastly, adults are first in discipline. We know that we can set time aside, enlist boundaries, and we can keep ourselves on track. So even though we don't have everything that children have, not all hope is lost. So what are the benefits of having second language acquisition be a part of our lives as adults? Well, firstly, and I think most importantly, it helps fight against disease like dementia. It is so good for your brain to learn language, even if you're 60, 70, 80, or 90. It contributes to learners' emotional and social well-being, meaning you rub shoulders with people and cultures that you otherwise might not, might not have met, possibly making new connections to friends or family. It improves one's self-esteem because once you start learning this language, you can start reaching language goals that improve your self-esteem. You get better with practice. It enhances the ability to multitask, improves performance in other academic areas. It can also help make connections between seemingly unrelated subjects, which I can personally attest to as a Spanish major. And obviously, it can help benefit one's career prospects, opening up one's options for their life. So, as this presentation has shown, SLA can be really important as a concept to people in adulthood. If anyone is still interested or wants to learn more about the theory of SLA, I've made a quick list of easy resources which I will make available in PDF form along with this video. Otherwise, here are my sources, and thank you for watching my presentation about adult SLA.